Welcome back to California Cooking. We've got a great show lined up today. I'm taking you to a new hot spot in West Hollywood that's serving up the best seafood in town. Then I'm gonna make a quick seared sea bass for dinner that'll win over the hearts of everyone in your family. And speaking of hearts, Levi and I are gonna make a yummy dessert. First, a seafood restaurant and raw bar that's popular in Boston has now made its way out west. I'm gonna meet the mother and son team behind Salty Girl and Sweet Boy. Take a look. Hi, you two. Hi. How are we doing? How are you? We're good. So good. I was saying, I'm so happy that this corner is not sitting empty. This is an iconic Sunset Strip, and then, you know, there was nothing in here for I a while. Know, I know, No, we feel very blessed to have gotten the location. Yeah. It's a really awesome. It's very visible. The neighbors were really dying for some place yes. to be here. Being from Boston, Kathy, yes. it's January, and the door's wide open, yeah, and how's it's it sunny. Feel? Pretty magical. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting used to this uh, um, LA thing? It doesn't take much, yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, the blood's already getting very thin. Wait, are we full-time now in LA? Or are we you are still Boston, LA? Both? Pretty much full-time in LA, yeah. but I spend time going to Boston, of course. Okay. Yes, Boston, you know, is home. Are you the salty girl? Hence I the am name? the salty girl. Yeah. Yes, I would definitely describe myself as a salty girl. Okay, would you second that? Oh, Mom's for a bit sure. Of a... <laughs> She's the salty girl. The article is very important. And what is a salty girl to you? Is this just a, uh, a girl that loves the sea and seafood, or is it someone that's got a bit of a salty uh, personality? It's, it's all of the above. Okay. I think we're living in a generation where women really are feeling emancipated in a way they haven't before. And I think a salty girl is kind of an ode to being bold and brash and strong and opinionated and not and, and fearless. I feel like the name was just so fitting for women today. Have you always felt this way? Have you always been that salty girl on the inside or is she just blossoming? Oh no, I have always been that salty girl quite, <laughs> quite clearly. How hard is the restaurant biz? It's hard. Because you have restaurants in Boston. Yes, this I is do. your first year. And in London. And in yes, London. Yes, I do. Uh, it's hard, it's challenging, but I am so passionate about food and the business yeah. and hospitality in general. I just, for me, it's a pleasure coming in every day and I, I feel so lucky to be able to do this job and to have also survived the pandemic. Sure. I mean, you know, this was a very, very tough time for everybody in my industry. This just opened in December mm -hmm. 2022, right, right before Christmas. And so your son yes. and your daughter live in LA. Yes, they do. And how is Ben here involved in the business? During the pandemic, Ben started his own cottage business from his house called Sweet Boy. To counterbalance yeah. salty the salty girl, girl you know, I think, I, like I think we're also yeah. moving into a zone where men and boys can and need to be sweet. Yes. You know, and sweet doesn't need to be saccharine, it can be sassy at times, but I think it's about uh, an openness and a vulnerability. Yeah. So that's, you know, was the yin to the salty girl. Yes, job. okay. Uh, when COVID started, um, I, you know, had posted a couple of cookies that I had made on my personal Instagram and then was getting DMs from people. Okay. And then um, they were gifted to uh, a celebrity and she posted them. Shall this person remain nameless? No, or do we it's want... Busy Phillips, who oh. I love. <laughs> so and she posted she something? She posted my cookies during an episode of Top Chef. And that's it? And I woke up to Viral. like 300 orders and I was like, well, I guess I'm, starting a business. Have you talked to Busy since? I have not connected with Busy, but I would love to. Oh my Hi, Busy. gosh! So we've been talking about opening a Salty Girl in, in LA for the better part of six years, yeah, looking for a location. Yeah. And when we finally found this location, we had a heart to heart and I was kind of like, well, how do you feel about yeah. me running the dessert program? So, and you know, for me, when I named the business and started, you know, in the back of my head, I was always like, well, it would be really wonderful to be able to do this with my mom and to be the sweet to her salty and find a way to really merge our brands with two distinct personalities, but find that beautiful middle ground. How's it working together as family? So Honestly, fun. it's amazing. It's kind of crazy going from living 3,000 miles away to all of a sudden being with you every day. No, but day. look, we are always, <laughs> always texting about food. It's yes. a re sending pictures back and forth. It's like just- It verges on unhealthy. <laughs> Very, Wait, is it what probably. connects you two? Oh, oh, no absolutely. question. Yes. No question. Yeah. Do you have a favorite of Ben's desserts? Pistachio buns. The pistachio buns. Yes. They're not on the they're not on the menu yet. yet. But Ben's know. chocolate chip cookie is pretty epic. I mean, really honestly, it's unlike any I've ever had. Really? It's what Busy 
posted Love. about. So it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, you obviously have the business mind, but do you, were you like when the kids were growing up, were you in the kitchen? Do oh you love God, to cook? She's the best that, cook. Really? So that's what I stems the place. love of all this. Oh, there's no question. Yeah, yeah no, it. it's infectious and big family meals yes. and all cooking together. Talk to me about the menu. What when people come to visit Salty Girl, what do we what do we So find? I would say that it uh, the unique thing about Salty Girl is at the core shore it's an oyster bar. We certainly address New England favorites, yes. but we do every iteration of fish possible. Mm -hmm. So tinned, mm -hmm. sauteed, fried, poached. I mean we and and we get fish from around the world. So we source only the best high quality seafood and we're you know, doing interesting things like whelks and orange clams and, mm. and uni fresh from Santa Barbara. Wow. I mean, these are things that typically you can't find in other places. Right. And we are diehard about fantastic quality and a variety that you can't find elsewhere. Yeah. What other um, things that maybe are unique to Boston? On well, the, I think the lobster roll, the hot lobster, lobster roll is roll. incredible. We do a lobster waffle which oh is really my. unusual and really fantastic. Yum. So, um, you know, we did a little twist on the uh, fried yes. chicken and waffle and people adore that dish. And then we, you know, serve crudos and smoked fish and, mm. you know, uh, and the smoked fish is fantastic actually. And tin fish, yeah, tell me. which is so awesome. So you just serve it with some lovely bread. We serve right? it with bread, butter, the keo pepper, and then three different salts. Lovely. They're the perfect cocktail food in my opinion. What are we making? We're gonna make a little clam vongole. I'm sorry, what was that? It's a clam vongole. Vongole, what is vongole? So vongole is, it, honestly, it's just a clam pasta. Yeah. White wine, garlic, butter, um, a little parsley, very, very classic, simple. So we're gonna start with a little extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. We are going to sweat a little of the garlic. We're gonna add some of the clams. So we're gonna sweat the clams in a little garlic. We're gonna add some white wine. That smells so good already. And what I usually do is I just take another pan and I just cover the clam. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna drop some pasta into our water. Like a spaghetti kind? Is yeah, that, this yeah. is a spaghetti. Okay, clam okay I'm seeing some pop open. open. So what I like to do is when they start to open, I just take them and put them off to the side so they don't overcook. So we're gonna add a little of the butter to the sauce, fresh lemon juice. All right, so we're gonna add just a little pasta water. Okay, pasta going right into that butter sauce. Yeah. All right, so now the best part, cheese. We, we, we definitely add a little cheese to our pasta here. Break the rules, the I like it. Okay, we're gonna add some of the cockles. Juice and all. Juice and all. Gorgeous. We're gonna add a little salt, and we're gonna add the clams. You do not skimp, bum. And we're gonna finish with a little parsley. Nice big pasta bowl. I like to take the clams and put them down first. Nice. And then we finish it with a little crushed chili pepper. Yes! Okay. That's so good. The butter, the la but it's also so simple. We're tasting. And then here comes your lobster. Yes. You can't have Salty Girl without the lobster on the menu. No, you can't, yeah. no. It really is our signature piece. Yeah. Uh, I particularly like the hot lobster roll. We're, we're very fond of butter. <laughs> and I've heard that the bun is very important. Yes, it is. The toasted. It's proprietary to us. The griddling of the bun, yes. I need like a bath after it. <laughs> I mean. It's really decadent. When you bite into the roll, you hear this crunch from the butter, and then there's the soft and delicate lobster. Not to mention the potato chips that are served with it are excellent. Yes. And then this beauty right here. These lobster frites have been selling off the Lobster frites. The, frite. the, the beautiful shop. lobster on top of a massive bed of french fries. Yes, main lobster, fresh cut, delicious. Garlic, parsley. Yes. Quality of your seafood is incredible. Yeah, thank you. Cute cake stands. Thank you. I like that. Oh my, okay, now. This is the sweet bun, my version of a cinnamon roll. Is that one bun? That is one bun. One bun is four buns. Okay. Called the crown. There's this lovely drizzle on top. Yes. Like it's, a caramel? It's, it's, it's topped with a toffee mm. drizzle. Mm. With a warm toffee drizzle. Oh my drizzle. gosh. So this is available for pre-order on Saturdays and Sundays, as well as the cookies. Are these both the chocolate chip? They're both the chocolate chip. With some 
sea salt. Sea salt, salt some flaky sea salt on top. These are these the Busy Phillips. Those are the Busy Phillips cookies. That yes. launched Sweet Boy. That launched Sweet Boy. Yep. When it's crispy on the edge and ooey gooey in the middle. Oh wow! It's the way it should be, right? That is an excellent chocolate chip cookie. Thank you. And then your mother just complimented you on your really beautiful tart. Thank you. So this is the yuzu and persimmon mm. tart uh, with a torched Italian meringue How on top, beautiful. a fresh persimmon slice, and some persimmon jam, and some uh, yuzu pearls. Light, perfect after seafood. You two together are trouble, yes, really. Yes, we can be. <laughs> it's so, so delicious. Thank you. And I can't wait to come back. Coming up, my sweet boy Levi and I are getting in the kitchen. We're whipping up a cherry pie for dessert. But first, it is an easy weeknight dinner that's special enough for company. I'm making seared sea bass with purple whipped potatoes. That's coming up next. What's for dinner? That's always the question. How about a quick and easy seared sea bass with a lemony sauce over potatoes? Sounds delicious and it's pretty as a picture. Take a look. I think I'm on a bit of a seafood kick. It's a lighter meal, but the way maybe to make it more festive is with the addition of some purple potatoes. So lately, um, the baby loves mashed purple potatoes. They're healthier for you and they're everywhere now. So this is a purple potato. I peeled some of it and inside reveals this beautiful purple potato. And then when you mash it, it becomes this gorgeous purple puree. So easy, just like you would a regular potato. I boiled it in some salted water until they're soft, peeled, and that's it. And I'm gonna quickly just pulse these and get a nice puree going. I'm gonna give a drizzle of cream and a tablespoon of butter, and that's it. Probably some salt, too. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock. You could do veggie stock, because I don't want all of it to be heavy cream, as delicious as that would be, to thin it out a little. Okay, done, so easy. So these gorgeous purple potatoes are gonna be the bed for our bass. So you could just picture the white bass on the purple potatoes, gonna be so pretty. So here's the Chilean sea bass. Um, I mean, pretty easy. I'm just gonna saute it, salt and pepper, but I'm gonna make like a lemon beurre blanc sauce to kind of go on top of everything. So let's take this back to the stove and get this nice and brown, and then I'll show you what we do with the sauce. For our Chilean sea bass, I've got beautiful bass three fillets and just salt and pepper. In the pan, I've got butter and olive oil together. And this will be a pretty quick cook. They're relatively thin pieces of fish. So in they go. And I dried the fish off with a paper towel because you want the moisture to get off the fish so it can brown. And then I season the other side. We'll just let that go for a few minutes. You don't wanna pull the fish too early. There we go, nice and brown, gorgeous. So basically it's like a shallow fry and we're gonna use the butter and the olive oil to make the sauce. Fish is coming out, very quick cook. Now in here. Turn it down a little so we don't burn what's happening. We've got our butter, our olive oil, and one diced shallot. We want this to just soften. I'm also going to add some white wine. This is a Chardonnay. And just let that cook down with some lemon too. Wine and lemon and shallot all go really well with fish. And you want it to reduce. So I'm gonna bring it up to a little bubble. Our mixture is reduced. It's the lemon juice, the wine, shallot, and now some garlic, a clove or two. 
And you just wanted the liquid to evaporate a little bit, not be quite so watery. So now things have thickened up. And then to that, some heavy cream to make a sauce, pinch of salt. And then to that, tarragon is an herb I don't use very often. It's kind of this anise licorice -y sort of thing, but it works so well, I think, with fish and with the cream and the shallots. So I'm just gonna pull a few leaves in there. Okay, let's plate it up. Time to plate our Chilean sea bass with our purple potato mash. So the first thing I would do, this purple potato is so striking and makes this meal, I think, special. So a bed of that. And in here, we've got a little bit of heavy cream, butter, some chicken stock, our sea bass right on top. And then our cream shallot tarragon sauce goes right on top with the lemon and the white wine. Don't be shy. And I think just to top it off, a little bit more tarragon. And there you go, you've got a special seafood dinner. Coming up, Levi and I are making dessert. It's a cherry pie, but you know me. I've got a few shortcuts. That's coming up next. Levi and I always have fun in the kitchen, especially when there's sugar involved. Here's an easy way to whip up a cherry pie. Levi, hi, honey. Hi. How you doing? Uh, what are we gonna make? What are we gonna make? Mm. I thought it'd be fun to make um, a big heart-shaped cherry pie. Yummy. You like that idea? Yes. So again, my favorite thing of all time is my frozen puff pastry. Whoa. I'm the so flour in the, Yeah, actually, put some flour on the board real quick. And then just move it around. Maybe some more. Okay. No, that's good. You don't want too much. So I'm going to roll this out. I'm going to try to make this as big as we can because I want a big heart. So could I cut out the heart? Yeah, but first, not yet. First I'm gonna roll it out and then we're gonna cut the heart. So Levi, for our cherry pie, normally I would just buy the canned cherry. I couldn't find the canned cherry pie filling, so I just made it. And the way I made it is I bought a bag of frozen cherries and I put in some cornstarch, some sugar, a little bit of orange zest, and orange. put it in the freezer just to cool it down and then nope. we've got homemade. Nope. Cherry pie filling. So we have our cherries. And now we're gonna put this on top. This is the tricky part. We've gotta cut it into a heart shape. I'm a little nervous about this actually. Yes, we are gonna do that. So then if go around with the fork and just make the crimp. So I have our egg wash, a little well, because... splash of water I'm gonna make an egg. with an egg. Now, can you can you do this for me? Yeah. I could paint. Okay, paint. I can make this. Paint our heart. Yeah, no. Oh no, you guys, this is going to be a disaster. It's going to be a failed project. Okay. Oh, you did it. I did it. I'm going to put it in yeah. right now. Sugar. You know what I we're gonna make? Sugar. Put some in the bowl. Ooh. Maybe two big ones. Yeah. And then so much sugar. I think that's plenty. So I have some reserved cherry juice. And we start with just a little. Stir and see what color we get. I wonder if it'll be pink or lavender. I think it's gonna be lavender. So you just you want it thick enough. You can play with it and see, but you want it at a texture, thickness where you could drizzle over the heart. But you have to let it cool. So we're ready. As soon as our heart's done, we'll we're put it. put some sugar on the clay. And we'll put a pretty hot pink purple glaze on it. Levi, look. Look at our heart. Okay, now we have to let it cool. 
and then once it's cool, we're gonna drizzle. Are you ready to decorate our heart-shaped cherry pie? Yeah. Put these. So it's cooled. It's been sitting on the counter for... For a thousand days. What feels like a thousand days, but probably an hour. Now we've got our cherry juice and our powdered sugar. You're Mr. Uh, can I just show you one little drizzle action? Or should we cover the whole thing? Cover the whole thing. You know what we probably need to put on it, which makes everything look pretty? Powdered sugar. You ready? Okay. Okay, okay you go like this. Okay. I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. Oh my gosh. See, powdered sugar saves the day again. When it looks funky, you just put powdered sugar on top. <laughs> okay, but we can, we're gonna taste it and we'll be the judge. Let's see, maybe it tastes delicious. Our heart-shaped cherry pie. You want a piece? Ooh, okay. I'm gonna try a little piece too. I mean, look at that. Good job, Levi. I mean, I think for our first try, it wasn't bad. Would I tweak a few things? Maybe. I love you. For all the recipes from today's show, you can follow us on Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. Well, that does it for us. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ooh. Wait, who's hearing this? Who's hearing this? Yeah, Brian. Okay. Yeah, Brian is. For our heart-shaped cherry pie. Where are you going now? Yeah, do you want to join me? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. Do you know what is my favorite place to eat? Where? And get desserts? Where? Seven. And get slushy. Smith's your b best friend. Yeah. Smith's what? my best friend and I play Minecraft with him. Uh-huh.